Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for June 26, 2013. I'm Matt Grabwall from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com and on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. Uh, if you are watching the video but you want to jump into the chat, head on over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room and log in with your Twitter handle and you can join in the conversation. Um, we have a new chat client over there. Actually, the old tweet chat thing got acquired and isn't working, but Twitter provided us an embedded chat room um, on their web page, so that's on the page. So now you still can go back to having the, um, the chat feed from Twitter and the video all on uh, one page, which is great. So head over there if you are just watching the video to jump into the, to jump into the uh, text chat. Um, with me tonight, uh, so Chris Wong is at a friend's retirement dinner tonight. But we have Scott Meek and Vic Hubbard here. So, Scott, why don't you introduce yourself? I am uh, Scott Meek, scottmeekwoodworks.com. And, uh, sorry, I'm in the middle of editing something. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at smeekwoodworks. And uh, I'm a plane maker and furniture maker and uh, all around good guy. I know we have Vic. Uh, yeah, I'm pitch hitting for uh, Chris, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the design changes Scott's done on uh, Chris's telephone game. Uh, Tumble Woodwork, uh, oh, excuse me, Tumblewood Creations is gonna be the name of my business. I'm actually starting it this year. Um, Got to get a def uh, website developed. My little brother's gonna design that for me, and and uh, um, probably enlist the help of Mr. Funk. Uh, among other people. Uh, so anyway, uh, Tumblewood at Tumblewood on Twitter. Cool. Uh, yeah. So tonight, Scott, we're going to talk about your changes to the table in the telephone game uh, that we're using to design this table. But before we do that, let's um, talk a little bit of Woodworking in America stuff. So last week we had um, Megan Fitzpatrick on to talk about Woodworking in America. And I thought that was pretty great, but I want to make sure that there was some news that came out today that I want to make sure everybody got. The banquet is back at Woodworking America, the Friday night banquet. Um, it's 55 bucks. You have to register special for it on the WIA page. Um, but there will be dinners, drinks, and um, they're going to have some uh, Excellence Awards there. The, the popular Woodworking Magazine Excellence Awards um, get announced there. And then on Saturday evening... Uh, this is the thing that Megan invited you to last week, is the Plane Makers Dinner. Um, 7 p.m. Saturday evening at the Metropolitan Club, which is walking distance from the conference itself. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So if you're going to Woodworking America, you should sign up for those events. If you're not going to Woodworking America, you should. So, yes, yes. Scott, let's get to your table. You All right. Have, uh, you want to screen share some things? or how do you Yeah, I'm just... Uh... Opening up, getting ready for that. Up here. Do you have the last uh, where where um, the last what I had? Let me pop that up really quick. Uh, yeah, if you want to pop that up real quick, and, and yeah, uh, I think I actually have it off of Chris's site here. Um, we should probably just go through each step real quick, just as a general review. Uh, we might have more people joining us today because uh, I don't know if you guys saw that Chris had a guest post on popularwoodworking.com uh, about about the wood or the uh, design. Telephone game. So, so um, let me just yeah, he was a guest blogger this week, contributing blog. So it started out. Uh, Chris designed um, uh, this is well. Wait, that's that's round. That's round three of which. Let me see. We got to get back to round one. Where is Chris's? Chris, where did you put your table? Because this is okay. Um, all right, no, here we go. So this is round two. This is Chris's table, um, and it had just a regular uh, uh, apron around it, um, and then it had this drop wedge in the middle. Uh, it had a slight arch to the apron too, didn't it? Just a little uh, bit. Yeah, a slight arch to the apron. There were uh, tapered legs, and then uh, um, then Matt took it, and uh, um, he brought down. He uh, he brought the um, the wedged. Um, uh, trestle across there up to the top and did a mimic, mimic that and he uh, um, 
at that point, we were still kind of ironing out some of the details of the uh, the game, and uh, he wanted to do some other stuff, but he had not done it. So in the discussion of that week, he did talk about the fact he wanted to flare the legs and uh, wasn't happy with this stretcher on the bottom being in the middle because it was just going to be knocking against people's shins and stuff, and I thought that was uh, pretty accurate. So um, from there, I took it over. And uh, um, I ended up uh, um, uh, actually taking the, the trestle out of it. Uh, I flared the legs for uh, um, take, uh, my idea was to take the trestle uh, out ultimately because I, I didn't look right for me moving it back. So, uh, but I flared the legs and then uh, 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 I brought the, instead of the wedge that that um, Matt had created, I actually um, turned that into a keystone. Um, and then uh, flat or, or made the top thinner and made it more of a laminate thing and, and added a shelf to it. So um, that's where Scott takes over for this week. All right, I'll go ahead and pull up my, my screen share here. And so this is where uh, where I've taken it. And um, as I mentioned last week, what I've what I kind of figured I wanted to do is make it more skeletal and and just kind of strip it down a little bit and uh, remove remove material and, and in addition to changing it. So um, as you can see, I kind of kept, I thickened the top back up just a little bit uh, from what, what you had, Vic. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of lengthened out these, uh, these curves in the top. Um, just a little bit, and then kind of mirrored that by by stretch those curves out a little more on this lower the the, uh, the front and back uh, apron. But I I kind of I'll show you the, the sketches that I went through to get to this point because uh, I was really struggling with it. Um, I wanted to give the illusion that that the uh, the aprons were were carrying the top in a different fashion than they normally do. So I came up with this this drawer that's in between the top and the apron. So the aprons literally look like um, they have a very skeletal, but also very um, what's the word? Um, Still very functional. Yeah, very functional, but they just, they're, they look more like they're holding everything up. Um, yeah. I, 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 uh, can't think of a word. But, um, and then the end. Uh, the end aprons, the side aprons, also mimic that by by rotating in the in the different direction from the front and back, and then they support the ends of the of the top. That's pretty um, cool. Twist. That is pretty so, cool. And that yeah. kind of mimics that that keystone. You know, you kind of see where I got from from that keystone to that. I wanted to make sure that I didn't completely lose the connection to there. Um, so it looks like a yoke. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I, like the way, I really love the way. Uh, not only does it do you do you carry the the um, the um, the the lifts throughout, you know, because it's really basically now they're they're definite lifts, but they're mm -hmm. very uh, soft lifts, uh, and the fact that they carry it, uh, you know, um, so on the front it's you know it's a downward lift, and then on the side it's an upward lift, but it's yeah. like this continuous line. Which I really like. Yeah, it definitely flows to it. And that yeah. that was one of the big things I was struggling with is getting that. I, I, it needed to all tie together, but I I didn't want it to be. Now, I like I said, I'll show you the sketches to where I got there, but you know, it kind of makes sense. But um, I also popped these uh, these tenons through just to give a little bit of a, a visual flair. And then, as you can see, I I stopped the legs before they get to the top yeah. again to. To give that illusion of it, of that top just sitting only on the aprons, and then the aprons run through the legs. And so um, it, it gives it almost an architect. Not, architectural is not even a word, but um, industrial, I guess, in a in an elegant sort of way. But it still has an organic feel to it. And I, I felt it. It really. I, I loved the tapered legs that that uh, you guys both come up with. And so I definitely kept that, and I think it, it adds to that organic feel of it. 
Um, yeah, I think. Oh, I also put a taper on the on the top, just like taper, yeah. mm -hmm. and that taper matches the taper on the drawer. It matches the taper on the uh, the pegs coming through too. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that's a functional drawer then. That is a functional drawer. That's very cool, Scott. I think that's like a, a an eleven out of a ten. You know, it's it's seriously, you did an awesome job. I, I, I may have to build this. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. Okay, so I was, you know, I was, you know, I pretty much I, I don't build other people's stuff. I don't want to, but um, uh, and and I liked my design fairly well, but it's not something that I liked enough that I would have wanted to build it. You know. But uh, if if I had come up with what you have, I'd probably want to build it because it's um, and it, you know you you probably like me and probably refine it beyond this. But it's just uh, there's so many elements that are um, it's sparse enough with the amount of elements, but it's um, uh, there's strong enough elements to carry um, carry everything. And I, I really really like what you did with it because all the angles, um, you know the. Uh, the fact that you angled the uh, the outside of the uh, the tabletop, uh, you know, your your uh, that's angled. Your drawer is angled. Uh, um, from what I can tell, same uh, same angle. Yeah, it's uh, the same. And angle. then your three tenons are at that angle. So it's just it's just it's it, it's really you did a really good job of carrying it through the whole uh, piece. Yeah, it was it was fun. I. I spent more time on it than I probably should have this week. <laughs> um, I'll just, I think I'll open up my, my sketchbook here. Just, I don't know if these are going to show up, but page one, two and three. Yeah. Okay. Um, four and five, like, one's upside down. Okay. Um, I, I see where you went. You're, you're upside down now. There you go. Yeah. So okay, you can kind of see the the path that it took. Yeah, the progression. Um, it's awesome. And so I always I always sketch on paper first. I feel like it it kind of creates the ideas in my head, but then I pop it into. You know, I'm going to screen share here again. Um, I've really gotten to where I I use SketchUp in my design process. So I, I get the idea on paper. But I'm not real good on perspective sketching on paper, and so that was where I was really struggling with on my my paper sketches. So, um, so you can see I, here, here is a a start. And what I do is I as I progress in the design is I'll copy the entire um, entire thing and then make a copy of it so that I I can change little things. Oops. Um, I don't know what I changed there, but then. I started playing with flipping that uh, apron over. Okay. And I also thicken up the top. And I was trying to see, well, what if I just got rid of that that tray in that in the top? Right. Um, how would that look? So I was kind of going that there, but and this is this is about the time um, where I I tweeted about how I was having trouble sticking with with three major changes because I got adding it up. And said, oh, that's that's kind of a lot of changes. The front aprons. Front back apron, side aprons, top, and removing the shelf that you had added. So, um, so I I attempted this where both the front and back aprons were in the same direction, but it just left that skinny little drawer. And again, it, it was I guess that was the point where I tweeted because I got I'd gotten rid of the uh, that tray, yeah. which I still like that design. I think. But it still didn't fit exactly what I was going for, and so that's that's when I when I started playing with it in that direction. I'm just I'm really I was really happy and excited with how that turned out. I mean, for me, as far as functionality, I still um, I, I'm with uh, um, in Megan's camp on the idea of you know having that drop down to me is is. It's nice, but it's not functional, and so that's the spill ramp. Yeah, for me, it would yeah. still it still would be uh, uh, an an element that I I would throw out, um, or I'd have to make the desk bigger because I, I just it's it's just not functional uh, for me. Yeah, definitely. But but the yeah the um, uh, I think you you nailed it because you know the 
the apron, changing the apron is one, you know, the, the fact you added the drawer and you, um, um, you know, added two tenons. The two tenons actually are involved with the apron. So you really did the only two really major changes and uh, yeah. subtle changes to I put the I put the, uh, the chamfer on the, or the, you know, I angled the top a little bit. But, but those are minor, top. yeah. So you thicken the top and, and uh, um, you know, but just seriously uh, um, phenomenal. I, I love the fact that if, you know, it, it flows, you know, down and then up, you know, it's like, it's yeah. like, it's like uh, Escher mindset um, on, on a table, you know? It's like yeah. this Mo Mobius strip underneath there. It's awesome. It's great, great design. I think, One little thing I I think don't it's know so if it's functional, though, too. I mean, bes besides the um, spill ramp, <laughs> it looks like such just a, like, well, I needed a drawer. And I didn't have much space, so I bent that wood. Yeah. And I needed to, I needed to support the ends, and... I bent that wood. I mean, it just looks it looks very like designed on the fly utilitarian, but in an ele in an elegant way. Yeah. Like uh, oh my gosh, I guess I could see I could see a motorcycle guy putting in a putting in a fuel tank and saying, "Oh, it's a big fuel tank, kind of like a <laughs> drawer. Better bend these pipes around it." Oh oh, I gotta I gotta get this. Uh, I gotta support that top. Wow. Uh, I don't. Th this, so you're this saying doesn't mean this, uh, I better bend that pipe up there to support that top. So you're saying this design should be sent to uh, the American Chopper guys and see if they want to. <laughs> no, because they'll 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 do all kinds <laughs> of crazy paint job to it. I don't know if uh, if it if it is noticeable, but um, I just want to point out something that I that I did on the uh, the three tenons. Um, Essentially, the the uh, side aprons have to go on first, and then a notch has to be cut in that in that apron in the through tenon, so that then the front and back can come together and, and kind of lock things in place. So that's a very cool idea, dude. Yeah, and you know, see, for me, I would probably still apt uh, for for um, to have that as a functional piece. Probably still. Opt to have that as a uh, sofa table and not have it raised on all three sides, but just on the ends, and yeah. have it maybe a little bit longer, but um, and still keep that drawer because that's like a nice place to like keep stationary. Or uh, God, my wife, what are the some of the weird things she puts in drawers? Uh, but you know, you got wives. Yeah. Um, yep. You understand that you know they have a drawer like they have a piece like that. They're gonna put like. Their candles and you know their girly things in there. Their love letters from their husband Vic. <laughs> <laughs> so Vic, were you saying you would uh, you would only do the the raised section on the ends? You would just continue the flat section all the way through to the back. So yeah, and I'd probably elongate it, uh, make it a yeah. little bit less deep, and make it a like a, I, a, a hall table or a sofa table. Yeah. I contemplated that, and I, I, I didn't play with it in the design act or myself, but I did contemplate doing that. Um, I, if I, I was going to make that a sofa good. table and not a desk, I would definitely put a lower shelf back in for books, and I would probably actually put that angle um, back on that lower shelf. I'd have it be pretty extreme so that the books, had like it was almost a built-in bookend on each end. Oh, okay. I guess it's all going back to the functional. Is this a desk you're going to sit at, or is it, is it a sofa table? It's a sofa table. I'd put the lower shelf back in. I expect, expect somebody to sit at it, then I wouldn't I wouldn't put it back in. But you know, if you if you if you start, I mean, um, <clears throat> uh, the latest. Uh, I'm I'm part of the guild uh, for the Wood Whisperer, you know, and so he's talking in the last uh, kind of wrap up of these uh, um, uh, tilt top tables that that he did. And uh, the question is, you know, why why would you build something like this? I mean, it's not. It's, yeah. I, nobody uses it. Like nobody uses tilt top tables, and and it's like he said, you know, well, yeah, well, we don't need to uh, build out of wood anymore. Honestly, I mean, it's like, why would you have furniture out of wood? It's because you know, it's 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 warm, it's beautiful, it's 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 heritage. It's you know, there's a long list of things. Um, and when it comes to like like something like this. 
Uh, a lot of times you would build it uh, like a secretary, for instance. Secretary to me is it's a beautiful piece of furniture, but it's not anywhere near something that's functional to me. Not in today's uh, age of you know how you use a, a desk. Right. <clears throat> you know, I do like yeah, this. This wouldn't be um, like a, a lawyer's desk in his office. This would be you know a little a little writing desk in a specialized writing room where you only have a pen and paper and you know maybe you're just your laptop or something but yeah it, it's definitely not not a big honking desk that you can have all of your paperwork spread across it and look at blueprints or something <laughs> right but seriously I think it is it's like I said it's for for uh, um, the design challenge it's 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 uh, the best I've seen so it's it's sweet I'm really excited to see uh, who who's next. Is it uh, Brian? Did he sign up? BC? Let me look. Oh, uh, he's later. Um, or is it? Next. I think it's Alan, right isn't now. it? Isn't Alan next? I think it might be. Oh, uh, who's Andy, Andy, Andy Brownell? <laughs> Megan. <laughs> it's gonna be Andy Brownell. Yep. Okay. I hope, I'll, I hope he knows. I'll I'll tweet him right now. Yeah, I don't know that I see him in the tweet saying, oh, what happened to my, there it is. Shouldn't look like there's a lot of people in the chat room. Yeah, I don't, it's, I don't know if it's Twitter or if it's this widget is not updating or what. Well, I'm just, I'm, I just am looking for uh, uh, wood chat, you know, the hashtag wood chat. Yeah. And I see Mike's there. Adam's not in. Oh, yeah, Adam's. Oh, no, he says he won't be able to follow tonight. Yeah. But check in from time to time. It looks like the widget that Twitter gave us doesn't actually work in real time. Or it doesn't update enough, or maybe it's a browser incompatibility, but <coughs> need to figure it out. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, um, following it on my phone. Um, yeah. Through uh, Falcon Pro, and and that updates immediately, and it, there's it's just not uh, any chatter on. on yeah, there's no no. I'm I'm on Hootsuite, and it it updates. You know, well, I can refresh it anytime I want. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so after it Andy, we have Greg Palmer in there. We signed up Diami, Ryan Van Vreedy, uh Jay Bates at Jay's Custom Creations, um, Tim Charles. And uh, half inch shy, Paul, Paul Marcel. So we've, oh, got, Paul, we've got quite a few. Paul people. Marcel's coming into it. Sweet. He's a crazy designer, man. Have you ever seen his uh, um, no comment designs? Yeah, they're they're fantastic. Yeah. That spider looking. Uh, That's off the hook. Wrap table yeah. is pretty sweet. That was fun to watch. Yeah, that is it's completely completely insane. But you know, Paul uh, Paul Marcel is an in, extremely intelligent guy too. Yeah. Uh, luckily, he doesn't always make me feel stupid when I talk to him. <laughs> he also plays hockey, so you don't want to you don't want to tick him off. <clears throat> yeah, and he, he uh, he's a really awesome dancer too. Um. Oh. Every, everybody froze, or I froze. I don't know why. You froze. You're good. You're there. Okay. I'm here. You're there. I hear you now. <clears throat> Um, and you guys know um, uh, on, I believe it's Saturday night um, that uh, um, Wood Talk is is got the uh, uh, what's what's the name of the bar, Matt, down there um, that we were at uh, with Nick set it up the first year I was there. Oh, you know we where we're it's upstairs drinking buckets of beer. Yeah, we've got that room again. I can't remember on, on Saturday. I'll look. So, um, so that that competes against one of the uh, you know uh, things at WIA, but more than likely, most of the bloggers are actually going to go to go to the uh, uh, party that's nothing but party. <laughs> it better not be competing with the plane makers uh, chat. Is I'm it sure? It is. Is is plane makers on uh, Saturday? I have no idea yet. I haven't. I haven't, uh, I haven't talked to Megan about it yet. 
I'm looking. I can't find it. The thing is, is you know, it's the the, the problem with that is like uh, if you have things at night and they're they're structured, mm -hmm. it's difficult because everybody's there to kind of see each other. Yeah. And and if you're there, if you if you got stuff that's structured, then then mm -hmm. you're not allowing the interaction between everybody that's there to see you, everybody else. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean. You you can definitely get too much stuff. Yeah. Because most most of the guys, I I I I've run the scenario several times, and I, I don't think I'm gonna go because um, I've got you know like I said I got to start my business up this year, and I've got so many things to do here uh, that I want to spend money on, and uh, so you gotta go, Vic. Sorry. Uh, I'm not gonna. Ha it's not gonna happen this year. Well, you know the God the plane the plane fare, I think it's like six hundred bucks just to to get there, um, you know. And then, you know, so, and it's not Bumming like me out, Vic. Bumming well, I, I would really like to go, but it's just you know, <laughs> six hundred bucks. Six hundred bucks is is uh, uh, my uh, Domino's uh, XL seven hundred. You know, <laughs> I'm close to it. I, well, actually, yeah. that's half of it, isn't it? So, but yeah. So I I just got contacted um, about another show. I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. I they just just contact me about it, and they're they're asking other uh, tool makers. Um, I guess somebody that was at the handwork show in Iowa, in that's in Kansas City, wants to do a show in Kansas City, and either two weeks before WIA or two weeks after. They're they're tr trying to find out when people want to do it. That's and rough. That's it's if it stays with one of those dates, I'm not going to do it because it's just too. Too close. Too close. Way too close. Because yeah. um, either people but, are not going to spend their money at WIA or they're not going to spend their money there. And my guess is that yeah. if it's, mm -hmm. you know, because where you're at, WIA is not that far, right? Yeah, it's six hours. Yeah, so six I mean, and a half. Yeah, anybody that would go to that would probably opt to save up and find out, especially if it's before. At that point, they're going to opt to save up their money and go to WIA and see what kind of deals are at WIA. Yeah. 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 So, I, I think it's great that more people are, are trying to do shows. But I think my uh, my comments are going to be like, okay, it needs to be at a different time of the year. It's it's great that you're excited to do it, but hold off a little bit yeah. and maybe do it in the spring next year or right um, when there's nothing else going on. Or right yeah. before Christmas and send and 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 send the invitation to all the woodworkers' wives. Yeah. The, the problem with that is weather. It's in Kansas City. Oh, yeah, nobody's going to go. Yeah. What's Kansas City like? Just cold and yeah, just, snowy? It, it has the potential of being cold and snowy. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say if you did it in, in early spring, because it's going to be warmer there in early spring than it's going to be like in Cincinnati. Um, but, you know, it, it could be it could be a good time. Then. Yeah. I don't know. It's good to see more shows, but I think it, it could run into uh, over oversaturation. So yeah, and well, as a vendor, especially, you got to pick and choose the ones you're going to be at. Um, Handworks. Once I figured out, I you know, I could get there, it was a no-brainer because it only it didn't cost me much to be there, other than you know the gas and the hotel and all that stuff. But um, the show itself. Was was really inexpensive for vendors, um, so that that's something that we got to think about too. And then there's Lee Nielsen hand tool events, which I hope next year or in the fall when those kick up again, I'll be taking advantage of those a lot more than I did this past year, because they don't charge other makers anything to be there. You just got to get there. So. Yeah. Was this was this a show? But this wasn't a magazine, was it? No, no, it's just a, a woodworker in, in Kansas City that's wanting to put it on. Gotcha. Didn't wood I think it could be cool. A weekend just, with wood. What's that? Didn't Wood Magazine do a weekend with wood? Yeah, um, Matt. Uh, oh my word. Vanderlist. Yeah, thank you. He went there. Yeah. 
And that was at their that was at their magazine headquarters, right? And it was kind of small. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, it was more of a small school. Woodworkers. Yeah. And I think it was more geared towards um, hands on. If anyone, if anyone is uh, from Wood listening and I get this wrong, please correct me. But I think it was more towards um, it was more beginner focused. Yeah. Or well, obvious focused. Yeah. But Wood Magazine is, you know, that's that's yeah. a demographic. Yeah, and, I, and that's why I think it's great that they're doing it because it, it, we need those. You know, how many people start there and work their way up in, into the other stuff? So. Yeah, I took Wood Magazine probably for I don't know five or six years um, in the beginning, um, and then it dropped off. Um, I've been taking I think fine woodworking for. God knows how long. Um, it used to have Woodwork Magazine. Loved that magazine. Um, I had American Woodworker for a little while, but it, it was like the same as Wood Magazine. Um, only even more repetitive, I think. Um, and I don't know whatever, whatever happened to American Woodworker. I mean, uh, it's just like kind of fallen off. I mean, I see it on the stand still, but I don't see any kind of involvement in the... Um, the online community. Um, which you know, which one again? American Woodworker. Woodworker. Yeah, I just I never seen ever it. it. Well, I mean, they still have they still have their web page. They still have forums and a gallery and a store, mm -hmm. and and they have contributor blogs and things like that. But I don't, I just don't know if it's um, reaching reaching people. Yeah. Huh. Well, I think like we talked about with Megan last week, the way things are going, you have to offer better value and exceptional value. So you, you've got to have good information. You've got to have good writers. And and part of what you've got to do has got to be a little bit different in, in some way. And you have to reach out. You really have to reach out to the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the community because... Well, it's like one thing that Matt said about Wood Magazine, and I believe this was uh, echoed uh, on by Rob and, and Diami when they went to uh, uh, Fine Woodworking, is that, you know, it was all uh, gray hair. I mean, but, you know, but all gray hair. You know, you know, you know but, but it was all older guys that really weren't involved in any, they were, you know, it's like, Twitter, Twitter, what's Twitter, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. It's it's a it's a it's a different demographic, I think, for the most part. Um, I think uh, Matt Kinney has done a really good job of kind of integrating uh, into the online um, world, and uh, um, I think they're doing they're doing a really good job. Of, um, like Mike's uh, been on uh, MWA several times, uh, Pekovic, and uh, um, you know Mike, and I think Ace has even been on there. Uh, so they're, I think, really trying to engage um, this particular audience too. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, because I think that's really the the ones that are uh, really keeping things really alive <clears throat> and and moving it forward is the online community because the yep. um, everything else it kind of happens, but it, it happens uh, so in such an isolated fashion. You know. Uh -huh. I think one of the things, too, to keep in mind, though, is, is one of the reasons why there's more retired gray-haired guys at those events is because the retired gray-haired guys are the guys that have disposable income to go to the events. And time. Um, and time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of younger guys are still in full-time jobs or you know, or been hit by the economy harder than, than other people or whatever. Yeah. And so that the opportunities to get to a lot of events is, is tougher. And that's, yeah. that's one area where I do like seeing new events pop up in new parts of the country. And I think yeah. that was one of the successes of Handworks was it was right smack dab in the middle of the country and a lot of people who couldn't make it to some of the other events could make it to to the middle of Iowa. And well, it was the same with uh, um, you know, splitting WIA last year. Um, yeah. It was a success on one hand, and and not as much. I think it would have been more of a success in a different venue. Um, Matt, you were there with me. Um, yeah. And that venue was really not. They split. It was too split up. 
<clears throat> yeah. It was like this large, really large campus where you had you had to choose either to be with everybody or in classes. Oh, uh, okay. You know, and you in you know the uh, the way WIA is is that you know it's up the escalator, down the escalator, up the escalator, down the escalator. You yeah. know, it's like it's. Well, I know that was that was one of the reasons why Asheville didn't get picked. Uh, you know, as the one of the East Coast locations over. Cincinnati, as much as much of a great place as to be for something like this, there's two reasons that, that Megan told me is a the airport is it's not a big airport to get in, um, and it's you know I guess when you compare it to a bigger city, it's just as close from, from downtown as a, a bigger city might be, if not closer. But the other thing is a place to have it. Um, we don't have a big convention center here in town yeah um, I I think a great place would be um, Grove uh, Grove Park Inn would be fantastic but from what I from what I understand and again don't quote me on this I, I I'm, I'm just going on the rumor here but from what I understand what happened is Grove Park basically said no we don't want noise and mm -hmm. dust and all that stuff so and guys guys hanging out with midget hookers and yeah Grove <laughs> Basically, what happened? Grove Park Inn was was bought by a new um, resort company. It was it was owned by a family since 1954, I think. And before that, it was owned by the Grove family. But um, the family sold it to this resort company, corporation thing. And since they took over, they've kind of diluted a lot of the stuff there. Um, they've made it better if you have a lot of money. And want something really ritzy, but now it's like twelve. It's twelve dollars to park just if you want to walk through, oh. check out the furniture, and yeah. so they've kind of gotten it to a point where well, we don't want the, we don't want any scummy little people here, so we're just going to price everybody else out of coming to visit, and it, it's kind of it's kind of sad. It, it, it's such a beautiful place and there's beautiful furniture to take a look at. But is there a college there that could host it? Um, I guess um, there's UNC Asheville and then there's AV Tech. Actually, AV Tech might be a good, a good one. Um, I didn't think about that. I'll have to, I'll have to send Megan a message and tell her to check those places. Because you could do the marketplace in some kind of auditorium or something. Yeah. And colleges have classrooms. Yeah. But again, then you're getting into what you guys ran into out, out west of, of having a Highly separated, in you know, yeah. parts of the shore are, are away from each other. Yeah, but if they have a um, if they have a building that has an auditorium and then nearby is is classrooms, it, that, I don't think that would be too bad. A college campus would be a, would would be a pretty good setting. I mean, some of them could you could some of those classes you could do outside. Yeah. Put the, Peter Fallon to be outside. <laughs> Cut down a tree on campus. Yeah, <laughs> you just sweat like a pig here. <laughs> yeah, you would sweat like a pig, and there'd be no trees. Well, yeah, there's not a whole lot of trees on my. Not side. a whole lot of trees. Yeah. My my wish is that that they would uh, the WA would stay one show a year, but then they would um, just move the locations. Yeah, so it would be a different location. Yeah, and that would be cool. That would be very cool. Maybe maybe one year in Cincy, then the next year a new location, then back in Cincy, then new location. Yeah. How are those? Uh, I don't have any say in it though. So. <laughs> what kills me is I have got I no matter no matter what I do I have a connecting flight to get there. So For I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, so it's an it's an all day affair to get there. Yeah, it is. It's tough. Um. What about those traveling woodworking shows? Are those any good? I've never been to any of those. I mean, the ones Andy's in, Andy Chidwick. Well, I mean, are those the only ones? Um, as far as traveling, I, I know that AFWS uh, has been uh, sending me tons of stuff to go down to Vegas, um, but that's such a huge industrial type show that it's yeah. really. Um, there's, there's a, um, you know, they do have a little bit geared toward uh, woodworkers, but 
I mean, like smaller woodworkers, I should say. But most of it's really geared toward people that are doing uh, cabinetry, production work, stuff like that. Yep. Lots of particle board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and multi multi head boring machines and stuff yeah, like that. right, yeah, edge banders and you know the latest and edge banding technology. Yeah, yeah, Which people geek so. out on that stuff, but it, you know, I mean, it's you, nice you definitely don't get the hand tool experience. At you push. you get to see like a uh, uh, you know a big felder in 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 action, and that's kind of cool. Oh, they're just an awesome machine. But I would I I'll, I'll watch that on YouTube instead of paying all the money to go to a show. For a machine that I know I'm not going to buy. Yeah, for me, um, uh, I went there the first year, and it was, you know, uh, it was cool because that was, you know, over my birthday weekend, and um, so we went there and and uh, uh, got to see some Cirque du Soleil shows and stuff. So it was, you know, it's combined with other stuff. So, um, but uh, can you imagine WIA in Vegas? Ooh. Oh God! <laughs> I have a hunch that there would be those of us. There would be some of us not actually uh, leaving Vegas on time. <laughs> but it could be awesome. The behavior that we exhibited two was it two years ago. Nobody yeah. would. Nobody would. Nobody would even worry. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Uh, two years ago, it was a blast at WIA. I, I would. I mean, like, I it's, it's killing me that I can't go this year because, uh, and uh, you know, I'm still not solid on it. I might vacillate and end up going, but, but uh, um, you know, this year, uh, Mark, Matt, and Shannon are all going to be there. Um, uh, you know, so that'll be fun. Um, and then I, I believe you know, Diami and and all those guys are going. Um, last year it was. It was at like a w, at a WIA in, in, in Pasadena. It was well. First of all, there was not any really. I mean, because we found a place to party, but it was just so small. And oh, that upstairs. Uh, was that the upstairs cramped bar? Yeah. Where we all were on that table. Yeah, it was just a super small place, super busy. Um, super hot, super cramped, super claustrophobic. Yeah, and and also. Everybody was kind of trying, you know, because uh, MWA was there, and, and, and they, were, they were kind of trying to um, use the time to, you know, move their organization, right, forward. Yeah, they weren't just there hanging out. They, yeah. they were there, like, yeah. As MWA. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, Shaking hands and kissing babies. Kind of, yeah. You know, it, and it wasn't a bad thing. I mean, it, no. it was... It was good to see them and stuff. It's just, uh, um, but uh, um, it just wasn't wasn't nearly the same vibe as is. Yeah, I'll make uh, a w. comment on the vibe. I, yeah. I got there and I didn't see it. it. It was much less a bunch of woodworkers hanging out and having fun. There was a lot of um, I don't know. It was not very. It was, that was not a friendly night to me. It wasn't as fun. There was there was a lot of like I don't know chest thumping going on or something, and it wasn't and and that and that, that wasn't the MWA guys doing the chest thumping. It was just other woodworkers like having a uh, a measuring contest, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, yeah. I came here to have beer and hang out with woodworkers and talk about woodworking and. I met some really cool people like so Ian I left. Kirby. <laughs> uh, Ian Kirby was there. Um, Really, really cool guy. He was a blast, uh, you know. And I always, uh, Nick Brown. I always love uh, seeing Nick. Yeah. Um, and then uh, um, Matt Watkins. I got to meet him and Chris, uh, Christine, and those two are a party in themselves. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Where has Matt been lately? I haven't seen him on Twitter in a while. Uh, he he. Uh, they moved to Park City. Um, uh, so they they moved to Park City and and uh, he's not unpacked and, and uh, back into a shop yet. Okay. So uh, um, I I, I knew uh, they were moving. I I don't know if they were moving like cities. And yeah. All. Well, Christine moved. Uh, um, you know, she's a realtor and uh, they moved to Park City, um, and she's actually not tweeting from on blank anymore. Okay. Uh, she's uh, using her uh, uh, another. You know her real name, and uh, 
and she's being a little less uh, <laughs> blue. A little less blue. More, more business minded on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, uh, yes, but are, we won one of the um, hand tool Olympics last year. Yeah. So, hey Vic, yeah. just just let you know, um, Delta has nonstop flights out of Seattle to Covington, Kentucky. For woodworking in America, I just looked on Expedia to try and convince you to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you can stay at the Westin and fly nonstop for seven hundred and sixty-seven bucks. There you go. Airfare and hotel. Yeah, I don't want to stay at the Westin. I want to stay at the Embassy Suites, but it's booked. You might is it, call, is it really? You might have to do your flight separate and then call the Embassy Suites. Embassy's yeah. booked already. According to Expedia, but I bet if you call the Embassy Suites. <clears throat> They might be able to get you in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, it's it's one of those things where you know I if if I go, I definitely want to get my business license first, and, and so I can write it off. You know, because I can write it off as a uh, um, expenditure for um, school. You know, so. But uh, that's what I do. Yeah. So. But uh, I just don't have a business license yet, so. Well, you, you got to do LLC, Vic. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got to actually get with my accountant. And I got to figure out how to transfer the, the, the best way to transfer all this stuff. I have to actually get a, a, an insurance broker because my insurance company will not uh, cover my shop once I become uh, a business. So. <coughs> So that makes it difficult. At least it's a separate building because if it was in my garage, it would be a major problem. See, mine's in my garage, and my homeowner's is covering it. You know, have you have you talked to them, and they know you have a business with it? Yeah, they call okay. it. A, it's just a doing business as for them. Okay. Yeah. With uh, mine, mine. If, they I don't. Make, if I was to make jelly in my house and sell it, they would they would, they would be able to do the same thing. Um, so. Can any of you guys invite Mike Mater into the Hangout real quick? Google yeah. Plus won't let me invite him. But he yeah. went to a woodworking show that I want him to tell us about. Okay, cool. Yeah, Mike, you're, you're, you're the, the only one that can invite. It, w it won't let me invite. It keeps saying, oops, try again. It, it keeps saying you've invited people. Um, it keeps giving me the Britney Spears error message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it won't I, let me invite. Yeah, I don't think I have anywhere where I can invite anybody. Great. Thank you, Google, for not letting Mike come in. He went to the Columbus keep, Woodworking Show, and I wanted him to tell us about it. It keeps popping up with a message saying, Woodchat invited people into the video call. Well, yeah. great. I hope it's working. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I've got a lot of things I've got to figure out. Um, uh, one really cool thing that came about um, that article I wrote for Mark on lighting um, on the Wood Whisper um, uh, is that I found a uh, uh, I got an email from a local woodworker that's in the process of setting up shop in his place and uh, um, so a guy local to you? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so that was really cool. So um, I haven't met him yet, but. Uh, uh, he sent me. Uh, I, I called him today, just kind of, because he wants to uh, take a tour of the shop and stuff. So, um, so I, I called him today and, and just kind of let him know. Yeah, I get off at you know four o'clock and give me a holler. So that's very cool. Yeah, because you know it's you know how it is. It's 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 a big expanse of nothing over this way. You know so. Yeah. And most, almost every, you know, the the few clubs that there are, they're all wood training, and um, you know, they're not they're not building anything, you know, um, and so it, you know, it's like for me, I want to find people that are designing cool stuff. There, is, I mean, we do actually uh, in, have a couple of like uh, world renowned turners in in that club. Yeah, uh, that are making like you know, like you know, huge money for a turning. Uh, but I'm still not really that taken by turning. Um, it's one of those things. Yeah, the only I, I want to get into turning a little bit. I, I, I took a class last year at Woodworking in America. I liked it, um, but I would I don't think it'd be what I call a vessel turner. I would do it. I would use do it for legs and 
and things like that for furniture parts, not for um, vessels. Or yeah. Stuff, or, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't do sculptural, I guess, is either. So. The sculptural is the only thing I would really, and other than like tool handles and stuff. But um, if I ever got into turning, it would be more for the sculptural aspect of it. Yeah, that's mine. Well, it's like I want to um, just, uh, you know, go to some scrap, uh, get some scrap from some of the buildings around here. And uh, just glue it up and just start. Uh, um, you know, I got a, a die grinder, um, and I want to get a, a Arbitech and just uh, kind of go to town doing some sculpture stuff because I really, really love uh, um, sculptural um, stuff out of wood. I, yeah. You know, I, I follow several people on uh, Facebook that are just insanely uh, artistic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think. Uh, I don't know if you saw the one I posted the uh, um, uh, last couple of days. A, a guy named John did this big, huge Mobius strip, um, and it's just... I think I saw that. I thought that was pretty much cool. uh, Let me pull it up here for you really quick. Uh, let's see. There's a, there's a big um, wood sculpture and art exhibit over in Raleigh, I think it's in Raleigh, uh, happening next month. So I'm really hoping to try to get over to, to check it out. It's hard to, it's sometimes hard to justify a, a four or five hour trip. Yeah. Just to, to go see an exhibit. But. Yeah, I think I'm <clears throat> um, spoiled to some extent because I, I look at uh, you know, because, like, for me, going over to Seattle, I was like, about four boring drive to get there. Well, Matt, you can testify. I mean, once you hit the dry side, yeah. it's like, sagebrush, 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 sagebrush. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. Yeah, but I love it. <laughs> I turn it's worse than going one hundred two point one, and I and I rock out driving through the desert. See, I, I think for for woodworking in America, you guys should just rent a car and do a road trip and videotape it, and and uh, grab Chris Wong, have him across come across Iowa. You know, corn 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 corn. Yeah, but I'm Are you freezing, Vic, or is that on my end? That's Vic froze. Okay. Yeah, I think I think he has to do the uh, do a road trip. I think he. I think it's fantastic. Document it for future posterity. Document it for future posterity. Oh yeah, I think the uh, screen share is eating a lot of my. Uh... What the heck? There. Okay. There we go. Do uh, you see it? Oh yeah, that's very cool. Oh yeah, that's very cool. Um, see, I think I need to. Uh, you need to you need to mute the video. Make it bigger. Oh, Vic's and it kicked him. <laughs> well, I don't think. Uh, I don't think Mike's going to make it in. I don't think Vic's going to make it back. And it's 8 o'clock. So how about we wrap it up? Um, next week we'll try and get Mike in here to tell us about the Columbus Woodworking Show. Um, and we'll uh, work with uh, Andy Brownell to make sure that he knows that he's next on the uh, telephone game design challenge and talk about his design. Um, and if we can't get in touch with Andy, we'll just go down to the next person on the list and uh, move Andy down and yep. uh, and keep cruising. So, and oh, Vic is back. Hey, Vic Chris, is back. Chris Wong should be back next week. Um, <clears throat> Vic, are you going to be able to join us next week? Are you Are you really there? I'm not sure Vic is really there. So. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Oh, Vic is back. So, Vic, are you going to be able to make it next? I week? had to just shut shut down this stuff. What's Are you going to be able to make it next week? I do not know at this point. Okay. Well, if okay. you can make it, that'd be great. We'd love to have you. Um, so we're wrapping it up, Vic. So 
That's wood chat for uh, June 26, 2013. Mm -hmm. Next week, we'll try and get Mike Mader in here to talk about the Columbus Woodworking Show, and we'll talk about the telephone game design challenge. Um, I'll be here. Wait, will I be here next week? Is uh, July what, 2nd? July 3rd. Is it really already? Ooh, yeah. next week's July 3rd. That might be a tough one with Independence Day. Well, yeah, the next two weeks are really iffy for me because uh, just because it's, you know, uh, Independence Day. And, and it's not so much that we're gone. It's just that we tend to have a lot of people over during that time. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, so we... Let's play it by ear as we get closer. We'll play it by ear. We're tentatively on for next week. Um, if we need to cancel, we'll let everybody know. Um, but we're gonna uh, get with Andy and let him know he's yep. up. Okay. We're gonna get with Andy, and if he can't do it, we'll go to the next person on the list. Okay. So that's it. Thanks everybody for joining. We do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you have something you want to share in the Hangout on video, you let us know. You can tweet Uppercut Wood or S Meek Woodworks um, and let us know, or Flair Woodworks or Chris has Flair, one of his many Twitter handles. Um, tell your friends about Wood Chat uh, and have them follow along. And remember. Anytime at all, you can tweet with the hashtag WoodChat with a question or a design um, problem, or if you just want to show off your most recent work, and that's how you connect to the WoodChat community even when we're not in the middle of a chat. So that's it for me. I'm Matt Gradwell from Uppercut Woodworks, signing off Scott Meek. Scott? I'm Scott, scottmeekwoodworks.com. With a yawn. <laughs> and Vic. Have a great weekend. All right, we'll see you later, everybody. See you later.